doing is I'm changing out this little wire feeder for the big wire feeder because I don't have any more five pound rolls but I got two or three 50 pound rolls and I'm going to use those rather than right now buying more five pound rolls or ten pound rolls I'm going to get more I'm just going to use the big wire feeder but uh, the problem is is apparently one of my set of rollers my dry rollers is I guess I wore them out I don't know if that's possible or if they were maladjusted for a long time um, or something like that and that caused them to wear out faster than they were supposed to or something like that but all I know is I can't get them to feed anything so I need to take this set of rolls out that works and put them in my bigger feeder which accepts the 50 pound rolls which is what I'm taking with me to do the job because I don't have enough wire left on here to possibly finish so I don't want to run out so that's what I'm doing right now We rolling. Uh, I didn't know he was rolling. Alright. Um, so basically this is my 8BS. It's great for taking in the field because it weighs a fraction of the weight of the um, 12VS. I guess I should get them down here for size comparison so you guys can see. This is the 8VS. Alright, so as you can see, that is this one here is the 12 VS. Alright, it's got a digital readout, which no big deal really. I mean I'm gonna turn the weld machine up to whatever I'm usually running at and I'm gonna crank this thing until I like where it welds. I don't ever look at this digital readout. I have no idea what it means or anything else. I really don't care. Alright. Then so this one doesn't have a digital readout, but like I say, it doesn't matter. I mean I'm just you know whatever on the machine it's just a Bobcat 250 so there's no digital readout up there so whatever I got on that and you know you just tune your wire feed until it sounds right which is and it welds right which I don't know how to explain that exactly without you know having a weld puddle in there anyway so this one takes these little little spools as you can see compared to the 40 pound or whatever they are they some oddball size 44 pounds of wire versus a 10 pound spool of wire, I think this is oddball too, I think it's 11, 11 pounds of wire. So you see the difference, you roll through these a lot faster, however in the field, and because this fits nicely in the side toolbox of my truck, I'll show you that too, and so this is nice to carry in the field, when it's fully loaded it's, you know, maybe 45, 50 pounds, I don't know, it's not too bad, it might be less than that, I'm really not sure. This thing, got without any wire in it, I mean it, it's a lump. I was humping this thing on a railroad job one day and threw my back out. It's the first heavy thing I picked up that morning and I had just got into the job and oh my god, I was in excruciating pain <laughs> sitting on bridge pilings welding. Just uh man, that was rough. So this thing can be cumbersome in the field. Um That being said, I don't have any more D's and I'm not doing an order from my supplier right now so I'm just gonna roll with the 50 pound spools that I do have which means I'm gonna lug this sucker in the field with me ABS, but it still does have just a touch of wire in it just in case something was to go wrong since I haven't used this wire feeder in some time. I'm going to take it just for a backup um, just because you never know.
Alright, pack these suckers up. I guess I'll show you how this fits in the truck, this little one. All right, so it's a, it is a little snug. It kind of ends up bending up my argon, I mean my gas, my inert gas hose back here at the back. So over time, I will have to change this out as I start to notice that I'm not getting good airflow and I have to mess with this thing. I'll have to make up a new one. But what it would take to, well, actually what I need is a 90 degree fitting in here. If I would put a 90 degree fitting in here, that would solve all my problems. I just have not ordered a 90 degree or I don't know if they make one that has this inert gas fitting on it, but if they did, that'd be great. And that could put a 90 on it and I could stop having this problem. So if anybody's got one of those out there, put me up. All right, so I'm gonna um, just throw it in there, see how it kinda goes. And always I can always try to keep a hold of my leads back here and hold them up like that, so hopefully that inert gas hose gets as little uh, dirt and debris in it as possible. Um, that's the only bad thing about having this quick connect kinda on there is, um, this one end, the male end, is kind of just open. So it's kind of open to some debris and stuff, but it's got a filter in it at the back of the machine itself, but sometimes you have to get in there and clean it out because it does get some dirt and debris in there having that quick connect set up. So, all right, that's how it kind of fits in there. And I just kind of tuck it away. And, and um, I wouldn't even pull it out of the box. I would just hook it up and leave it in the box when I can get close enough to it within 15 foot of my um, of my MIG torch, you know, in the truck. You know, a lot of times I can get that close and I can just work with it there, but same thing, that, that gas hose back there, it kinks up on me back there when I got it in the box, so I always drag it out so it's not kinking up on me, messing up my welds. So, like I say, the really easy one is 90 degree with the bevel headed inert gas fitting would be cool. Um, other than that, we're gonna load it up, we're gonna hit the road.